Hey guys, what's up? So welcome to this new ES6 tutorial series I'm putting together. And I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible, although I can tell you that some of the latest JavaScript stuff is just confusing, and it's confusing for several reasons. Um, JavaScript used to just be this code that we'd like inserted into our HTML pages and it just rendered, and we used you know, jQuery with some plugins, and, uh, and those had a little bit of headaches every now and then, but nowadays like it's a lot more complicated than that. Uh, so being a front-end engineer is now arguably harder than being what used to be like a C-sharp back-end developer uh, or even you know Python, Django, or, or Ruby Rails developer. Um, JavaScript is now that complicated where there's so many different libraries and so many different ways of writing the code. But the whole point is that JavaScript is the only language that runs in the browser. Browsers render JavaScript differently. And the latest version of JavaScript is ES6 or uh, ECMAScript 2015. I know that's really weird and confusing, but that's that's the way it is. Um, and we have to end up using a tool like Babel to then take our modern JavaScript and turn it into older JavaScripts that still works in older browsers. And the reason why is because if your stuff didn't work in older browsers, I think your customers would get, get upset. So we can write in some of the latest ES6 standards, but it means that we need to have Babel. So in order to have Babel, it means that we need to have Node.js installed on our machine because Node.js comes with a package manager that we're going to use to install Babel by default. So make sure you have Node.js installed and you can do that here. Uh, so that'll give you access to NPM so we can install Babel. Um, we also need some way of writing our code and I recommend Visual Studio Code. So if you just search that in Google, it's a free product and you can use any editor you want though. Technically you could write in Notepad, although I wouldn't suggest it. Um, so that all said, I have a folder that I called ES6 Tutorial, and I want to go ahead and, uh, and, and navigate to that folder. So that's what I'm doing here, and I'm going to go into ES6. I'm going to open up a command line by saying CMD. So now I have it opened up into that tutorial folder, and you can see there's nothing in it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to use npm to run this command called init. Uh, and I say init, for some reason I always pronounce it wrong, and, and most people say init, init, but I, for whatever, I, I, I like, I think I say init because of the iPhone and all that stuff, and it just kind of is programmed in my head. Uh, but we're just going to call this ES6, and we'll just skip all this stuff. Just keep pressing enter, all this stuff doesn't matter. And then finally, we're going to see that it has this package.json file. And we don't have to worry about too much uh, of what that is doing right now because I don't want to confuse anything more than it has to be. Let's just keep continuing forward and we're going to install two tools that we need. And those two tools um, are called, and it says right here, npm install save dev, which is Babel CLI, which stands for command line interface, and Babel preset environment. And that allows us to write this modern JavaScript. So we're going to copy that entire statement and we're going to paste it inside of our command prompt and run this. And what NPM does is it really just goes across the internet. It grabs these projects, and we're installing two here, Babel CLI and Babel Preset Environment, and it, it brings them onto your computer, and it's going, to, it's going to install them in a folder that gets created for you called Node Modules. So in modern JavaScript, the files now consist of all kinds of different JavaScript files, and they're spread out all over the place, and we can import them and use them as needed. Um, and then we can also use entire projects like React or Angular and things like that. And those will all be installed inside the Node Modules folder right here. So because we installed two dependencies, we now have a Node Modules folder. And the Node Modules folder contains all of the, all the information Babel needed. So you can see Babel is a pretty big friggin' project. It needed all this stuff for those two projects that we just, uh, that we just installed. Another thing too is because we said save dev, it adds them to our package.json file to tell us exactly which two versions of, uh, of these, you know, basically which version of Babel CLI and which version of Babel preset environment. And the reason why that's important is because you could take your project and without having to worry about all the node modules and stuff like that, you could just have your package and, uh, and, and bring it into another folder on another computer across the world and just run npm install and it will go through all the dependencies and install them for you into the node modules folder. So that's really what package.json is all about. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do, and Babel actually tells you that it needs it, is it says that you need to create a Babel RC file. And that's confusing, but we're just going to copy this part. And we're going to create this file called .babelrc. 
and it's a special file type um, that Babel uses. Um, so when we use Babel's command line interface, it's going to, it's just going to work, and that's all you need to know. So let's create another new file. And this is going to be actually our main file. So we're going to call this index.js. You know what? We're going to even call it first.js. So that way we know this is our first file. And we're going to create a JavaScript array, which hasn't changed with the newer versions of JavaScript. But this is an array. It's inside the square braces. And we end it with a semicolon. And we, give, we have it, the variable name of x. So now what do we want to do if we want to actually say, you know what? I'm going to take this file and I want to... I want to bundle it into a another file. So we're going to pull up our command line. And here, we're, I'm going to say npm run. And then we're going to say babel. And we're going to give it a start file, which is index.js. Or no, we call it first.js. And then we're going to say hyphen o for out file. And we're going to say bundle.js. And press enter. And this is going to run and throw us an error. Now this says that it couldn't figure out what Babel meant, so what we're going to do is add that to our package.json file. And under scripts here, we're going to put an enter, and we're just going to say Babel. And then Babel, make sure there's a comma after that. So we just, we just said Babel uh, and Babel. And let's try this again. All right, so it's always good to have error messages um, because you, you learn a lot from error messages. There's no such thing as actually programming anything without running into errors. And, and, and identifying those errors and not freaking out is you're usually rule number one. But you just build a lot because you, they, you don't know what you don't know. And a good programmer knows that they don't know a lot. And in the same sense that one of the biggest traits of being a good programmer is also being able to figure out what the problem is. Uh, being able to phrase questions and that takes experience and really running into errors so you know okay this is like this is a type error uh, this is some sort of undefined error you know there's all kinds of different errors that you can have in this particular case this thing says hey um, it tells you what the problem is it says bundle.js doesn't exist so it doesn't know what you're trying to do and the reason why is because we're running this locally by saying npm run babel but in order for us to pass the arguments to the babel script which is right here, because this just says, hey, run Babel. In order for NPM to actually understand the arguments, we have to say hyphen hyphen after our Babel command. So NPM run Babel and then space hyphen hyphen. Anything after that is going to be arguments that is passed to Babel. So the first argument is the file that we created, first.js. And then we're saying out or hyphen O is our out file. We want Babel to turn first.js to use bundle.js. So now by doing that, we don't run into any errors. We look here, we now have a bundle.js file created. So let's take a look at uh, bundle.js, figure out what's going on there. So if we look at bundle, you can see that there isn't much change between first and bundle, but there is this use strict. And use strict is something that we're used to in older versions of JavaScript because um, JavaScript has some weirdness to it where uh, if if, uh, if you tried to access an undeclared variable, JavaScript would just create one for you and assign it to the global namespace. Um, so we really don't need to get into too much of this, but if you wanted to read more about this, there's a lot of good documentation. You can go to W3Schools, uh, or you can go to uh, Mozilla's documentation, which is uh, strict mode MSDN, uh, or I'm sorry, MDN, not MSDN beat. But uh, this talks all about strict mode, but it'll prevent things like uh, unassigned variables from being declared. So like if I said y equals, uh, you know, not in, the, not in the compiled version, but let's do that uh, here. We're going to say y equals this is a script. I'm not sure what this is going to do, but we're going to try. And you can see y hasn't been declared. There's no var. Like it's just, hey, y doesn't exist, but we're going to say, hey, do, do something with it. Um, so in normal JavaScript, it doesn't complain about that sort of thing. Let's press the up arrow so we can run. Uh, the exact same command that we did. And this thing went ahead and created. And you can see it didn't even complain. However, if we were to reference this, uh, this JavaScript file inside of our browser and the browser actually executes this, then there's going to be a, a, a complaint file because y is undeclared. So let's go ahead and 
and get that going so that we can actually see this inside of a browser. We're gonna create an index.html file. And inside the index.html, we're gonna create some basic HTML here. We're gonna have HTML. Inside here, we're gonna have our head, head, uh, body, body. So that's all the standard HTML stuff you need. If you go and highlight all this and press control, not forward slash, uh, control, no, not F, control, alt F, alt F. Man, I don't friggin' know. So it's actually Shift Alt F. That's so weird. Shift Alt F, and you can see it actually formats it a little better. Probably want this to be indented like that. Uh, but anyway, inside of our head, we're gonna actually load our script files. So we're gonna say script uh, source dot forward slash, and we're gonna say bundle. So we want to use the actual bundled file that's being created for us, and we actually need to close this off officially, like that. All right, so now if we go ahead and we open up our folder and we double click on our index file that we created, this should open it up in a browser. And if we look at it in the browser, inspect the element, um, you can see that we now get an error, uncaught reference error Y is not defined. It's like, damn, you tried to reference an undeclared variable. Typically, you don't want to do that, but under normal JavaScript, it doesn't complain unless you use that use strict. And that's actually a new feature of ES5. I believe John Riesig, the uh, jQuery creator, actually wanted that to go in. Uh, but here, if I remove the use strict, there's no complaints now. Check this out. If we go to the window.globalobject, uh, so if I said window.y, this is a script. Check that shit out. So even though JavaScript was like, hey, you didn't declare this variable before, it went ahead and it assigned y to the, to the global namespace, which is the window object without any sort of complaints whatsoever. So that means that we're polluting the global namespace probably because we had some sort of an error. Um, so anyway, that's what Babel's uh, doing. It's actually saying, hey, you know, use this older, more correct version of JavaScript so that way, um, you know, if there's some problems, people will be notified of it. However, during the compilation process of, of creating the bundle file, it's not going to complain about that there. It's not, that's not its job to say, hey, you need to write proper JavaScript. It's just saying, hey, you can write new JavaScript and we'll turn it to old JavaScript. But you can still write some sloppy shit, though. Uh, so you want to be careful about that. So for this first video of this series, this is where I'm going to end up. Uh, I'm going to leave this first video off because this was all about just getting everything set up. So now that we have a basic setup and we're going to be able to see our output, we're going to start actually getting into the more of the, the ES6 syntax um, in the following videos, guys. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you upvote this video. It, it's a motivation for me to keep making the videos. Um, sometimes I do tutorials and I get feedback. It's like, hey, continue this tutorial. But it's like, Damn, I started getting traffic on this thing like five months later because people started to find value in it. Um, you know, and by that time it was like five months you know, later, I barely know or remember where my files were and like what I was doing and it's just hard. So like if I can get some decent support out of the gate, it's much more beneficial. Uh, I think it, it creates more motivation for me to, to continue the series and everything. So um, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching. You guys have a good day. Bye. Hey guys, so a lot of you ask me, how do I get my foot in the door to become a programmer? And I just want to take a moment to mention Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp is a 12-week intensive course that focuses on the technologies of the here and now for web development. Uh, some of the things that they're actually teaching in this 12-week course, it's geared to get you into the, the industry by focusing on things like jQuery, Node.js, React, Angular, how to use GitHub. So a lot of the things that you're going to need to do as a developer, as soon as you start, they're going to be teaching you in this in this coding boot camp. And the entire goal is to be able to get you into the industry within 12 weeks. So if you guys are interested in learning more information about Dev Mountain Coding Boot Camp, just check out the link in the description tab of this video. Thank you for watching and have a good day.